Okay, so thank you to the organisers for inviting me to uh, attend here. I've enjoyed uh, Richard's scene setting already. Um, but I thought we needed to start with a definition of ageing. Um, hopefully what Richard has said so far is it's not simply putting another candle on your birthday cake each year. That's not what we're talking about. So here's my definition. It's the increasing frailty of an organism here, a human being, over time that reduces your ability to deal with stress resulting in increased chance of disease and death. Put simply, spotting which of these apparently frolicking, happy older adults has actually aged badly will only occur when you put them under stress. It could be a fall and a hip fracture, and the ones that have aged badly will then end up quite frail. And that's really what I'm interested in stopping. I want to make sure that old age is enjoyed and not endured. So, I'm an immunologist, and I hope by the end of the talk I'm going to persuade you that actually where you should put your bets and your money is actually sorting the aged immune system out. So, to do that, we have to decide, does the immune system age? I've told you my definition of um, uh, aging, that it's this reducibility to deal with stress, and for the immune system, that's, that's basically an infection. That's the challenge the immune system faces, and it increases your chance of disease and death. So think of the job of the immune system. So it has to be able to detect and kill pathogens. It also has to have a thing called immune memory so that when you see uh, a pathogen the second time, you respond more quickly and better to it. That's how vaccines work. Also, it has to be able to remove uh, damaged cells, senescent cells that you've already heard about from Richard, and early cancer cells. So it's got quite a few big jobs, and it has to do that without damaging self. So what's the evidence that actually your immune system has aged? Well, you can't find a better example than the current pandemic. When you look at the um, incidence, those actually gaining the infections, and I've got males on the left and females on the right. This is data from last year in the UK, but it hasn't changed very much. You can see basically the older you are, the increased chance there is of you succumbing to SARS-CoV-2 and developing COVID-19. Now, that's bad enough, but hey, look at disease severity. This is those uh, admitted to hospital, but uh, they don't require ventilation, so low level of care. On the right, those um, entering um, ICU. And again, even sharper age-related uh, here um, uh, in both uh, mild and, and uh, severe severity. And when we go to death, even starker, over 90% of the deaths of COVID-19 are in the over 65-year-olds. So for me, classic signs of an age system. Okay, so I've got to do a bit of Immunology 101 because I suspect I haven't got too many immunologists in the audience. If there are some there, I do apologise. Okay, so on the left, you can break your immune system down. It's the cells in your blood. It's what we call the innate immune system. Think of this as the first line of defence in attack. These guys, they're not overly bright, but you've got lots of them and they'll go in there, kill and do the job quickly. So you've got neutrophils here. You'll see a bit more about those later. They're specialized for dealing with bacteria. Uh, these two, the monocyte and the dendritic cell, they're a bit like sentinels. They're out there in all the tissues of the body looking for problems, and they alert uh, the smart bit of the immune system to the problem. And then on the right here, we've got natural killer, um, which I think is a lovely Quentin Tarantino type name. But the, the job of these guys is to kill viruses, tumor cells, and senescent cells. On the right, we've got the adaptive immune system. This is the smart bit. These cells, the T cells and the B cells, they are very specific for one target. So not like the first guys will basically kill anything. The guys on the right, very specialized. So there'll be a T cell specialized for uh, recognizing the spike protein of SARS-CoV-2. The B cells make the antibody. They're great, but they're slow. They take a week to two weeks to get their act together because there's not many of them. So they first have to proliferate like crazy so that you've got lots of them. Okay, so those are the two systems. And I'm going to, during the talk, briefly tell you about neutrophils, NK cells, and T cells and what happens with aging. Right. So first of all, oops, come on. Oh, okay, so Richard's already introduced, and this is another version of that same paper, Richard, that we all use all the time. So aging mechanisms, all of these basically occur in your immune cells. So if you can think of it as a hierarchy of the, the circle that, uh, that Richard showed you. So first of all, you have some sort of damage. This can be damage to your DNA, it can be damage to your proteins, 
that damage isn't repaired. And you see this in uh, the immune cells. You get a response to that damage. So it can be your mitochondria, your energy producers don't work as well. Or your cell can enter this uh, uh, state of cellular senescence. This then leads to the aging effect because many of these um, uh, responses uh, lead to inflammation in the body. And that we know is one of the, the causes of aging. Oops. Okay, so this increased inflammation with aging, it's called inflammaging. Um, and we know that basically the more you have of this, the higher the risk you get pretty well every age-related disease. So whether it's cancer, whether it's dementia, whether it's heart disease, whether it's osteoporosis, the more of this inflammation you have, and we measure it through these, these uh, immune hormones called cytokines, then the higher your risk of, 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 of disease and death. And we now have um, a calculator called the IH, so you can actually measure how... Um, inflamed and how aged a person is by taking a blood sample, measuring 51 of these critters and deciding how old they are. So that's really useful and some of you might uh, be interested to know that. Oops. Okay. Right. So adaptive immunity, the clever bit. I'm going to tell you about this first. So again, we need a bit of immunology 101 here. So your T cells, they're made in the thymus. That's where the name comes from. The, as I said, they're very specific for just one target. And so when they meet their target, so this could be the coronavirus, they proliferate like crazy. That's why you get swollen lymph glands when you've got any sort of an infection. They then control the infection. Once they've done that, majority of them will then die off. If that doesn't happen, you end up the size of a sumo wrestler by the time you're five. So, um, but you leave some behind, uh, and this is your memory. So that if you meet the pathogen again, then you respond much more quickly. It doesn't take you two weeks to do it the second time round. You respond literally in days. What happens with aging? Why does this system go wrong? Why don't we respond to vaccines as well? Why can't we deal with new pathogens? This is one of the main reasons. Your thymus, the, the producer of those T cells, starts to shrink from about the age of 20. So even some of you guys, youngsters in the audience, you're already shrinking, I'm afraid. Um, Here's the rate. So there it is in males and females. And by the time you're 65 and older, you've only got about 10% of the thymus left. So you're less able to respond to new pathogens like coronavirus or to vaccines. And this is a, a key feature of aging. But your immune system likes to keep everything in balance. It has a, a sort of a set number of T cells all of the time, except when you've got an infection, when it expands them. And so what it does, it ex expands the cells it's already got in the blood. As a consequence of that, they become older and they become senescent. So these are data we've got. So these are two markers. You can look for them because they've got this protein CD28 missing. So we take a blood sample from somebody and we see if their T cells have got CD28 or not. If they haven't got it, then they're senescent. So these are, these are healthy data. and You can see there are more senescent cells in a healthy older adult. This is another marker that shows the same data. Now, these senescent cells, just like the cells that um, Richard told you about, the reason they do damage is not only do they not function well, so these T cells can't proliferate well. So you get a, a virus infection and they just don't proliferate as well. So even if you've seen that before or you've been vaccinated, you don't get a good response. But more than that, they're also highly pro-inflammatory. So they contribute to this inflammation and do some of the damage related um, uh, to aging. And we're now we've got another score, so you can take a blood sample, you can look at the um, immune cells, measure lots of different things, and, and make a score called IMAGE, which again tells you how old your immune system is. But importantly, the older your immune system, the higher your chance uh, of death and disease. So it's a marker of how biologically old you are as well. So quite a neat measure. Okay, so... What's the evidence that actually this really matters a bit beyond getting infections or not getting infections? Well, this is some, it's only in my so far, this is some lovely data from Maria Mittelbrunn, uh, the University of Madrid. And what she did was she made just the T cells in a mouse senescent. So only the T cells. Uh, this is the wild type mouse um, on the left here. And these about 10 months old. So it's quite a youngster for a mouse. Um, but this is the one that's got senescent T cells. And I don't think you need to be a mouse specialist to see this guy looks old. And you look at curvature of the spine, they've got this kyphosis of the spine. You look at the heart, their hearts have classic signs of aging. 
Um, you look at their time on, on a rotor rod. So we put these little mice on a rotating rod and see how long they can stay on. Um, and basically, the, 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 um, the mouse with the old T cells doesn't stay on as well. This is just the same data. When you monitor their act activity, the red is the, the aged mouse, as it were. They don't move around very lot. They just want to sit there in the, in the corner watching daytime TV. Um, and this is death, so they, uh, they just don't live as long either. So just having old T cells is enough to generate the aged phenotype in a mouse. Oops, oops, sorry. Luckily, you can correct that. So one of the things you can do is to um, give a precursor called nucleoside riboside, and it replaces a compound in the body, NAD, which declines with age in the immune system and in lots of uh, systems in the body. And if you do that, you give this compound to the mice. Um, this is um, looking at their, their heart rate. Here's the wild type. It increases um, as in the aged mouse, but the NAD restores it. There's that activity monitor. They're more active if they re re replace their NAD. Um, what else have we got? Grip strength, what's their, their muscle strength like? The ones that have had their T cells rejuvenated, they're, they're stronger, and their inflammation goes down as well. So you restore those T cells, replace the NAD, then the mouse seems to have then now not been aged anymore. So hopefully I've persuaded you that going after T cells is, is a good idea. And here is just some of the targets. Um, so um, a guy called Arne Akbar at UCL is doing a lot of work in this area. So he's already um, used an inhibitor of P38 MAC kinase and improved uh, immune responses. AMPK here, this is one of the targets of metformin. So that also improves T cell function. And there are others as well. So the field is already out there trialing uh, to trying to improve T cells. And Richard told you about Joan Mannix's work um, using uh, rapamycin or rapalogs to, to get the same effect. Okay, second bit, natural killers. Okay, so we were interested, and you'll hear a lot more about senescent cells from, from Jim Kirkland. These senescent cells build up in the body as you get older. And as immunologists, we wonder, well, why does that happen? You get rid of them when you're young. Why do they build up when you're old? And um, we knew that one of the cells, well, we knew from 2013, from the work of Valeria Krasinovsky, that one of the cells that gets rid of senescent cells, recognize them, is the natural killer. And how it does this is it recognizes the target, and it literally pumps out uh, a molecule called perforin, which makes a hole in the target cell, the senescent cell. It then squirts in granzyme and kills the cells. So this is its killing mechanism. And for senescent cells, the senescent cells give themselves away. They put proteins on their surface. Uh, two of them are mica and OB2. Um, and basically, um, the, this is uh, the, the showing this, this expression. And this is recognized by a receptor on the natural killer called NKG2D. So it sees the senescent cells and it can hone in and kill it. And we wondered, well, perhaps as you get older, perhaps the natural killers just don't kill them as well. And we'd already shown back in 2012 that if you give natural killers one of their other targets, a cancer cell, if you compare healthy young and healthy old, that the older person's new natural killer cells are only about 50% as effective. So you give them a, a cancer cell, they don't kill as well. Is the same true for senescent cells? We haven't published this data yet, but yeah, it's true. These are some fibroblasts. These are healthy ones. These are senescent ones and you feed them to uh, natural killer cells from a young person and an old person, and you can see the older person is just not as good at killing those senescent cells. So we think this is another good target. If you can, you've got the approach that Jim uses of giving drugs to kill the senescent cells, but what about getting your immune system to work better? Because that would only not mean you, you actually uh, remove senescent cells, but you're also your antiviral mechanisms would improve and your anti-cancer mechanisms. So that's what we're working on now, trying to um, improve um, NK killing of uh, senescent cells. Why don't they work as well? Well, we know it's because they basically don't squirt that perforin out as well as you get older. So we're looking at the mechanisms and basically going drug screening to try and find drugs that will allow them to put the perforin out. Okay, last little bit. If you can cope with a little bit more immunology, this is actually my favorite immune cell. This is the neutrophil. And it's the most abundant white cell in your blood. You make 10 to the 11 of these a day because they're also the shortest lived cell in the body. And their job is to, to kill bacteria. And they do this by, here, here he is on the right here. 
uh, eating a bacteria. They move from the blood to wherever the infection is. That's called chemotaxis. And there they basically ingest it, uh, phagocytosis, and then they kill it. So we wondered, um, is one of the reasons that um, older adults are uh, more susceptible to infections with bacteria that their neutrophils don't work as well? Um, and so we, we looked at this. So basically this is, imagine you're looking down a microscope and at the top of the screen here, you've got a bacteria or an attractant for the neutrophil. This is a young person's neutrophils. They start down here and they move up there and we watch them, we video them. It's a bit like a video nasty. Um, and we uh, work out how fast they move, um, do they wiggle about a lot. So that's a young person's cells, beautiful movement. Here's an old person's. You do not have to be a professor of immunology to see that there's a problem here. The target's at the top. Look at this guy. This guy's going backwards, this is going sideways, they wiggle around a lot. I always say it looks like they've lost their GPS system. These guys, you know, they're supposed to be dealing with bacteria, reproducing every 20 minutes. Mm, these are getting lost along the way. Okay, when you look at it, this is their overall movement in a direction, not a problem. Here's young, here's old. This is the movement in the right direction. That's the problem. They don't move in the right direction. So it means they're slower to get there, but we think there's more to it than that because what I haven't told you, the dirty little secret in immunology, is that neutrophils, when they go from the blood to the tissue, they burrow. So uh, this is a neutrophil. These are blood vessels, so they squeeze between them and they release uh, damaging molecules at the surface so that they can burrow through the tissue. So they always cause damage by moving to the pathogen. And we think this is why you're sicker as you're older. When you get any sort of infection, the older person always sicker because they get more inflammation. And we measured this, so this is healthy young and healthy old. This is a measure of how much damage the neutrophil has caused. And you can see, in, even in a healthy old person, there's twice as much damage and this is associated with that increase in inflammation. Okay, but we want to do something about it. We want to get these neutrophils there quicker to deal with bacteria, and we want to stop them doing the damage on the way. So this is geroscience in action. This is finding out what the aging problem is and connect, correcting it. So this is a horrible signaling diagram, but how they know where to go is the uh, attractant hits the cell, triggers this pathway, and then they move. So we hypothesize, well, clearly this pathway doesn't work as well. So we did some tests, um, and this is basically showing you, here's a young person, there's the uh, neutrophils freshly isolated. This is showing you how active that first bit of the pathway is. So beautifully active, um, but on the older person, it doesn't get activated. And the problem is it's activated to start with. So we had to come in and reset that and say, let's inhibit that so that the neutrophil can then move. So we did this. That, that first bit um, comes in four flavors in the neutrophil, alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. And we found that inhibitors of delta or gamma would correct that problem. This is in vitro. Now, I can't go along the corridor in the hospital that I work in and give any of these compounds to a sick old lady with pneumonia because they're all chemotherapy. They're very powerful agents. So we had to find another way around it. So we went down here. We said, let's go to the end of the cascade and inhibit this instead. And the reason we went that way, because um, there's something that can inhibit that step, and they're called statins. So statins, as well as lowering your cholesterol, also reduce the production of this compound here, geronile, geronile. And that's needed for that bit of the signaling program to work well. So statins partly work by some off-target effects, as it were. Would they improve neutrophil function? Yep, I wouldn't say it if it didn't happen. This is a young person's neutrophils, and this is, uh, they've got no problem anyway without and with statin. Here's the old person's, no statin, rubbish. And then with statin, beautiful. And it's uh, concentration dependent. That's in vitro. Does it work in vivo? So we took the hardest test. We took older people with pneumonia, and we did uh, this study called Snoopy. And the most fun you have in biomedical research is thinking daft names for your studies. Um, we've got a curry theme at the moment. We've currently got Balti 1 and Balti 2 running, um, which are vitamin D studies. So we took 64 patients with uh, pneumonia. We gave half of them um, uh, simvastatin for seven days or placebo. Uh, we looked at their neutrophil function, and then we looked for survival, safety, all the rest of it. And we actually followed them for a year. Here's what happened. So even... Oops. Even in a 
person with pneumonia. Here's the placebo, and there's the increase in, in their chemotaxis, their migration. Their neutrophils functioned better after just seven days of treatment. More importantly, on the left here, this is a thing called the SOFA score, how sick the patient is. So after just seven days, the ones on the simvastatin were less sick. But look at this. I think on the right, this is the really important one. This is the survival curve for the placebo and the statin. They lived longer. We reduced death by 40% just using statins. So understanding what's happening with the aged neutrophil allows you to extend uh, life and hopefully health span as well. And we're now doing a much bigger uh, study. Right, so just uh, finish by saying thank you to everybody. These are the guys who really do the work and uh, the guys who fund us as well, including the Glenn Foundation from the US. Thank you.